All right, so you all heard both mine and Gary's insights on the Masters. So now we're going to bring in someone with a bit more professional uh, <laughs> analytics, I guess, of pro golf. So we got Bud Copeland joining us for some in-depth Masters talk leading into this uh, exciting weekend. Gentlemen, thank you again. Uh, it's good to be with you all. And I said, you know, I've, I've got my ma- it's Masters season. I've got my Masters hat on. Last time we talked. Uh, one of you all talked about an age gap and differential. This hat is actually probably either not pushing it, but nearly as old as you buddy of mine brought this back. I've had to pass up master's tickets three times in my life. Once was in high school. My dad worked for Textron, which is the name of a company that actually owns easy go golf carts. Uh, and because of that connection, we lived in, in the Southeast. He had tickets offered to him every year, but he always passed them up. I didn't find out about this until my senior year. And he said, yeah, cause I know you would take them and we'd have to miss i'd have to miss baseball and then that spring break tournaments the whole bit y'all know the deal so i had to pass those up my right. senior oh, yeah, year once sure. he finally said what do you want to do and i was trying to go you know play college ball so i was like i can't miss these tournaments i had to pass them up then uh and then a couple of years later i had to pass them up for uh basically a girl it was bad i had a flight booked to go see a girl out in santa barbara california and a buddy of mine said hey i got practice tickets you know you want to go and I was young and I was like, oh, I don't know if I can change my flight. You know, this, she'll be really upset. So he did bring me back this hat. Uh, shout out, Christian. We're going to be we're going to spend a week together at the U.S. Open this year. So look for us down there when maybe we can get some collaborative cool. uh, insights from you boys while I'm down there. And then the last time was uh, mm-hmm. was much more just it wasn't going to work. I was having a baby. Uh, and then it turned out the I didn't have to pass up anyways. It was the COVID Masters. A uh, good buddy of mine said, hey, man, uh, I got him. My dad just you know dropped him down to me. Do you want to go? Uh, and I was like, dude, my wife is due way too close to that. So I have to say yeah, no. And then yeah. blessedly it got punted to November. But unfortunately, the November Masters, all of a sudden the original ticket holders were like, yeah, I think I think we're going to hold on to these this year. So yeah, no shit you are. Uh, college game yeah, day. No would, <laughs> college game day would have been a lot of fun. But this Masters is uh, it feels a little bit different. I think we've got uh, you know golf's in that place where. The chuckleheads and the people who want to thrive on controversy are pushing the, the the division in the game and you know the unification. The beautiful thing about the Masters is it's its own entity. It always has been. And when Live Golf broke away, I was one of the I was you know saying the whole time they're not going to change anything. They're going to let everybody else kind of do what they want to do. And Augusta National is going to do what they want to do. I mean, take for instance the new 13th tee box that's pushed all the way back to add you know 30 40 yards and make it a more more of a challenge. Uh, I was looking at something online today talking about the agronomy of it and how you just can't have grass grow there. There's too many trees. There's not enough this. There's not enough that. So what did Augusta do? They just dug up all the dirt and they planted their own water. They planted their own warmth. They planted their own. Like they just, they, they do whatever they want to do. And that's one of the beautiful things about it. And that's why all these guys fight like hell to get there. And so this, one of the uh, fascinating parts about live being in this ecosystem of major golf is we don't have real form to go off of. There's a new variable when it comes to being an audience for these majors that you do kind of have to handicap. How does the performance of what's going on over at live? How is that going to translate a guy like Joaquin Neiman, who basically got in, he's a live guy. He's won a couple times on live, but he got in by winning on the DP world tour uh, or the Australian Asian tour. Sorry. He won the Australian open down there and then winning again on the Asian tour. And that's where Augusta national said, all right, we get it. We get it. You're good. You can come this year. Um, and so you got to look out for a guy like him who's in really good form over there, but you know, yeah. upstairs, is it going to translate? And, and I think they're good enough that right. it will. So I would be on the lookout for Joaquin and Brooksy this week, Brooksy, uh, after, after what happened last year. I mean, it's just gut wrenching. I was actually pulling for him. I'm a big Brooksy guy. Uh, and, and so I'd, I'd look yeah. out for those two guys. Redemption tour. But, um, as far as from the PGA tour side, I, Damn, dude. I mean, Scotty Scheffler is the obvious, you know, you know, he's, he's in form. You always you can't sleep on Rory. Yeah. But as far as everything else, I think it's a wide open tournament this year. Um, and now I can't even remember the question. I've just gone down the rabbit hole of the masters. <laughs> I started with my hat and <laughs> then I remembered if, that we're actually talking yeah. about the tournament. No, it was, it was just more of like, it was, I mean, you kind of nailed, nailed it anyways. It was more of just like the masters insights. Um, I mean, do you have, are you rolling with Brooksy? Is that your pick kind of? Um, is there anybody that like maybe it, let's let's go on the betting part of it? Is there anybody yeah. that might be a little bit of a wild card that you would think could could win it as like a dark horse type of thing? Uh, 
always, always, always got to got to keep an eye on past champions, no matter what their form is, because mm-hmm. at this level of golf, the line of demarcation between great, elite, champion, etc., is so thin that the guys who are on the other side, who have been there before, who are dressing in the champions' locker room, something kind of ticks in them when they when they did Jack Nicklaus's plaque back in the late '90s. Um, they famously, you know, Ben Hogan's got the Hogan Bridge, and then you know, there's Gene Sarazen's kind of memorial there, and they were putting up Jack Nicklaus's plaque, you know, memorializing all of his achievements. They left six, eight inches blank on the bottom. He was in his fifties at that point. I mean, he had, you know, was well beyond his last his last one win. <laughs> they left six, eight inches purposefully, and when they unveiled it, they said because you never know. It was like a year or two later that he was flirting with the lead going into the weekend, and I mean. In Tiger in 2019, Freddie Couples for a long time, he was always kind of lurking out there. Uh, it's just a course that lends itself to comfort, familiarity. It is very hilly, which is why I look out for Tiger, even though he's grinding. Apparently, right. that yeah, I was just gonna yeah. say, just gonna say that no mobility in that left ankle and some, you know, some stuff going on in his lower back. So, I mean, it's. You don't want to say it, but I mean, you just hope he makes the cut. You hope he doesn't hurt himself because I, I don't think at 48, yeah. even given all the stuff his body's gone through, golf is a sport you can continue to win, uh, but you need the reps mm-hmm. and you need the and you need the actual kind of, you know. But like I said, former champion, he's done it before. Phil Mickelson's another guy. I remember Phil? Phil went low on Sunday last year, yeah, and so he did. those are those yeah. guys. Colin Morikawa. It's not going to be. I don't think you're going to get somebody kind of out of nowhere winning this week. Uh, and then if I really had to say, I, I, I um, sorry, go ahead. No, I was gonna say if you really had to say for a newcomer, do not sleep on Ludwig Obert. So past champions, the obvious yeah. bets like Scotty, Rory, John Rahm, those guys. So again, past champions, and then you know the top tier, JT, Rory. The big, those those are the obvious ones. But Ludwig Obert uh, or Aberg, as we've been saying for a long time. That's who I would keep an eye on as far as the newcomers that uh, that kind of have the whole package, and he's already proven it on the big stage at the Ryder Cup, and you know he's already won, and he's just yep. top mm-hmm. ten after top ten after top ten. Look out for Ludwig. Yeah, and this is going to be JT's first tournament without bones on the bag too, which mm. is going to be interesting. I can't wait to see that. A couple years now, back. That's, That's going to be interesting. It'll yeah. be a big change. Yeah. Um, which is yeah. funny. Bones. Is I was going to say the, the other one is like. Oh. oh really? Yeah, that's cool. My, I heard his, my, vo- I heard like his voice this morning. I'm like, oh. pick. talk to me, Goose. <laughs> <laughs> I would not be surprised. I love Bubba Watson for this course in particular. I just I don't know why. Every time I wa- every time I watch a Bubba round, he just goes low as all hell. So I he, don't know. Just well, he, it, call it call it that bad that feeling in the knee. You know, he's got that. He's got he fits the exact. I mean. Well, like I said, a little bit older, past champion, knows the place, has confidence around there. He's only 45. Uh, and what did he mm-hmm. win? He won in 2010. Two, or no, he won 12 and yep. 14. He won the PGA. He won twice, sort of. right? Yeah. Yeah, 12, 14. He's been in the running before, but he's that perfect mold of, you know, I'm going to show you a thing or two. I've been here before. I know, you know, I know what it's like. It's funny, Bubba from Baghdad. Baghdad, Florida has about 12 people in it. And it's about two hours away from where I grew up in Tallahassee. <laughs> it's in the Pandal, just outside of Bumfuck. Uh, but I love that play. I love Bubba Watson this week. I think him. I think Sergio. As much as I think Sergio. Sergio is another good one. Yeah. On a personal level, he annoy he annoys me. And my my ex brother in law used to work college athletics over at the College of Charleston, and he did say that Sergio was kind of a prick. I guess Sergio's wife or girlfriend at the time was golfer there, and he said that like, no, nah, he is. Like he he's a jerk. Like no cameras around, but he kind of always presented himself. Yeah. So there pooing on Sergio hmm. this week, but I would also bet on mm-hmm. Sergio if the scenario yeah, right. was correct. <laughs> uh, listen, I ain't too proud to beg. I was shitting all over Bryson yesterday or two days ago or three days ago or whenever it was, but you know, wish him luck. I just piped down Bryson. I don't think like I don't think Bryson, I think also Bryson's put out too much of the karma when he said that par is sixty eight for him. When he decided to go down his, you yeah. know, roid rage, <laughs> long right. drive journey and go, because of that, par is sixty eight for me at Augusta National you you deserve the Gooch Award for asterisk of the year. That that kind of stuff to me just yeah, bugs yeah, me the yeah. wrong way. Gooch Award. <laughs> Be our new, we're gonna we're gonna make a a basic bogeys invitational and you get a Gooch Award. The Gooch Award well, for just the dumbest thing. He's said. playing this week, right? Down at Trump. Yeah, down at Doral this week, right? Yeah, I don't think yeah. the, the, no, he's not he's not in the field in Augusta, and I think that's what he's all butthurt about. Yeah, but he's definitely yeah. he's definitely in the field. It was of interesting too. I don't know. 
I don't know if you watched the uh, full swing yet, but uh, mm-hmm. Tom Kim, sh- the the clip of him showing up last year and he accidentally found himself in the uh, champions locker room. Yeah. <laughs> it was like I don't think I'm supposed That's to be so here. Good. I don't, I don't <laughs> think this is where I'm supposed to be. <laughs> that is so good. I and and but at the same time, the whole camera crew was in there too. It's like nobody stopped. That <laughs> yeah, they were just like. <laughs> Fuck, oh, this is gonna be great. You, you work, you work production. If you see some good content going, you stop at him. Hell no, it's not your job to stop him. It's that guy right over there yeah, who yeah. works at Augusta National. I'm just holding the camera here, buddy. That's Tom Kim. I don't, you know, I work right. for whatever <laughs> yeah, media yeah, yeah. productions. I don't know who you are. Uh, that's also a quick way to get exited from Augusta. And never asked back. Speaking of, yeah, right. Ser- <laughs> it looks like Sergio is uh, Sergio is actually leading the live event right now. So, like I said, former champion. If he's in oh, any kind wow. of form, he could come up there. Bubba Watson's up there, uh, top five right now. Patrick Reed, another former champion, is up there, top five right now. Uh, as we're recording this, so th- I mean, it's gonna be it's major season. It's the freaking Masters. It's mm-hmm. you. You can't yeah. really. You can almost. It's it's much safer to bet. You know, week to week on the PGA Tour because again, you can get into a cadence. You can see who's riding hot, who's what. That's the beauty of these majors. Everybody's coming from, or specifically mm-hmm. the Masters, the U.S. Open, the Open Championship, the PGA. There's a lot of different roads that, uh, shall I say, consistently lead all right there. With the Masters, it's invitational. You never know, uh, and it, it's the first. So we're gonna find out who's ready to win a major this year. Heck yeah! Cool. Man. Well, yeah, we appreciate all the insights on it, and uh, we're actually kicking it next to our little amateur insights. So we got uh, various people that send in their picks, and we're going to get to those next here in the hey, episode. So. Hey, I, listen, I still hold that amateur card. I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm, a, I'm an armed. I know what I know, and I know what I don't. Uh, and I will say this: if you have it, if you're not a pimento cheese fan, the pimento cheese sandwich, uh, apparently from the meal <laughs> kit from Augusta National, it's one thing they do right. I guess they have so much money elsewhere; they don't have to raise the concession prices. So. Uh, yeah, it's, yeah, yeah, it's like a buck fifty for it or something. Oh, it's like right? a buck fifty. It's like, two, it's like a buck fifty for the egg salad, like <laughs> pimento cheese, a buck fifty, chicken sandwich, two fifty. Uh, it it is Shangri La, and one of these days, basic bogeys will will be there together under the oaks. Hell yeah, yeah brother! Reco- reco- Hell recording, yeah. recording some content because even they won't be able to keep yeah. the YouTubers out for long. No, no. there's no chance. You got it. They got to adjust to. Let so. us in. Let, right now, somebody's going to find this and, and, and just blackball both of us. And my apologies to the both of you for being tagged. With my <laughs> it's now, it's but, clearly from Bryson. It is. It absolutely <laughs> is. Listen, they want him less than they want me. Jokes. But I sincerely appreciate you all asking me to come in here and share some insights. It's, the mo- it's one of the most wonderful times of the year. It's my second favorite tournament of the year behind the Players' Championship for personal reasons. But uh, it, there's something special about it. There's something unique. And that's why other tournaments try to get there. But... Nothing's ever going to touch Augusta National. And if you were curious, this is the one piece of trivia I wanted to leave you with. Um, Where is it? Where is it? The green that they use on their jackets. It's called Pantone. What are you guys is in this? Pantone 342. There you go. Pantone 342. It's spelled Pant1 and then the number 342. There's your master's green in case you needed it. Wow, we might. Do. He he's ran a, a drunken masters a few times, so we have like a it's like a brown jacket. That's yeah, like we, so usually what I do, I have this it. thing called the drunken masters, and we try to run it. Usually, we do it once. The, I do it once a year. I go to the thrift store and I buy a fucking jacket, and then I'll put like some stencil stuff on the back. This is like drunken masters champion, like whatever year, and like the only it's eighteen holes, but. The goal of it, the main rule you have to stick to is it's at least one beer. You have to finish your beer per hole, so Good it God. just gets fucking messy <laughs> and we do like a couple rules where you like one shot you can throw your you can throw your shot yeah, yeah i give you a string that's like you know like a four foot yep. string so you can yeah classic scramble pump. classic we'll scramble add-ons yeah yeah but it's just it's it's gotten there was uh, uh, yeah there was one year the last time we did it it was before covid right? it was before yeah COVID, we haven't right? done it since we haven't done since covid but before that we were all pretty hammered by like 11 and it was like we all got beat by Somebody, some girl that came, but she had like three drinks the whole time, and we didn't know. So, hate to see it. Well, thanks for flying the flag. That uh, ended the uh, that tournament with no pants on. Yeah, yeah. There was a whole card that did not (laughs) finish the pants on. Like the the 18th hole, they teed off and had no pants. (laughs) We're gonna have to connect on a future show and talk about talk all about the the brown jacket and uh, the drunken masters. But in the meantime, gentlemen, enjoy the tournament. I appreciate it. Yeah, thanks yeah. for taking the time for to, to come us, on man. with us. 
Thanks for watching today's episode. To see more of our content, be sure to follow us on Instagram, TikTok, and subscribe on YouTube. We can be found at Basic Bogies on all platforms. Thanks. We hope to see you on the next one.